CRTs are not just for communication, they're also a great thing as far as health and safety is concerned. Yeah, very definitely. Um, the old uh, yesteryear of RT has been used on the farm back you know, the last 20, 30 years ago, etc. The radios have changed considerably. Nowadays they're actually a tool that can be used on the farm not just for their primary reason of communication but also the networks and those sort of things that they're operating on etc. give that added advantage of being able to give welfare checks for loan worker, uh, for people who are working on their own so that the RT system can support the, those checks on farm for um, the duty of care that's necessary from the farm managers, farm owners are concerned, right the way through to giving GPS location on the uh, on the f um, herd managers and those sort of things whilst they're actually working on the farms, providing there's a network there that can support that sort of technology. And of course, you can actually see where the RT is in case you do need to get there. Yeah, right down to the <coughs> RT that's actually on the uh, belt of the person that's using it, etc. So if, they, if there's an emergency event or somebody falls off a motorbike or something like that and needs assistance, they can hit the alarm on their radio and it, they can go into a uh, computer and see exactly where that unit is. I guess you can actually sort of do a reporting system and if somebody doesn't answer when they're supposed to, you've got them on the GPS? Yeah, they can. Uh, I mean, you're in a situation where uh, if you've got lone worker in operation with the radios as well, which means that the radio is set with a preset timer, and as the person's on busy working, the radio will give them a reminder that it's going to escalate through a process. If there's no response through that process, then an alarm will be activated to all radios on the farm. However, if, the, if it activates through the process, then he just needs to reset by doing a welfare check. It might be as simple as Craig to, uh, to uh, all personnel, A-OK, -okay, whatever the case may be, and obviously that becomes a rhythm within the communications on the farm so that everybody is virtually, p not policing, but checking on everyone else's uh, well-being. It'd be vital, wouldn't it, for massive burn-offs? Uh, yeah, it is, but in just day-to-day -day operation, because you've got, if you've, depending on the size of the farm, you can have people spread from one end of the farm to the other, and if there's an accident down one end, and there's not a lot of people, a lot of traffic coming through, it could be three, four hours before that person's actually located if there is an issue. Is it, is it right that they can actually now also tie into other networks? Well, they can do um, with the with the move to digital and those sort of things. The um, and the access now into the IP, which basically is internet. Um, you can communicate over a cellular device through to a farm um, that could be hundreds of kilometres between, or even outside the country if you wish to. Now, a cellular device meaning a cell phone? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, you can use a cell phone using an app on a cellular phone to actually communicate back to the RPT back onto farm. So the boss could be sitting sipping pina coladas in Fiji if he's lucky enough. <laughs> if he's and lucky still, enough. And still hear the traffic on the farm if need be, if he just wants to check in and see how things are going. That's huge technology. Yes, very definitely. But to a lesser degree, we've got um, we've got um, people that are working on farms uh, in the Ashburton area, and we've got managers that are living in Christchurch. And those managers from their homes can be hearing the communications on the farm and can choose to communicate from RT to RT, not even using the cellular. Craig, we've come a long, long way from the old-fashioned walkie-talkie. A very, very long way, and this is where people need to sort of um, get their heads around that RTs, which used to be a, a yesteryear product, and seem to be that. You know, they've, they've, they've moved on from that, they've moved into the cellular space, but the coverage is not always there. The RT now is in a situation where it is able to be used, providing the networks are there, which they are in Canterbury, to be able to communicate from Christchurch all the way down to Tamuka if you want it to. Now, changing the subject slightly, you've got a wee device which can let you know where something is if it gets stolen. Oh, very definitely. And, and people have been screaming for this sort of product and we never had it available for quite a period of time. But as in our last program when we had a bit of a chat with you, the little spot tracker, which is this is the size of the unit here, very, very small. That device can go onto a vehicle as small as a, a trailer because it has its own internal batteries. Uh, it can go onto a trailer, it could go onto a cod bike, anything that is of value that is being stolen. We know that there's a lot of uh, equipment that's being stolen off farms. Uh, and this is a real, really, really good little uh, piece of equipment that allows you, even from your cellular device, to be advised when a movement alarm has happened on this unit. So if it's in the middle of the night, all of a sudden your, your uh, unit chirps up to say there's a movement on the tractor, which you thought was in the back paddock hanging onto the irrigator, um, is now being you know, stolen. It will give the location of that device any stopped events and it can be tracked to its, um, where it's been taken to. So I guess the police would be applauding you guys? Oh, very definitely. It makes it a lot easier on everyone. You get to retrieve the equipment that's been stolen, plus also those people that have stolen it, and then in a situation, obviously, they will be uh, assisting the police with their inquiries.